Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have uh, frozen the clock on our challenge semi finals at the moment, and we will restart it in a moment because we're going to have the main event final now in just a moment. I'd like to invite, just for a photo call initially, our referee Christian Bach and our two finalists, uh, Dave and Drew, to take uh, photographs first. And may I have a huge round of applause for a man who gained his class one referee tickets this very day, Mr. Christian Buck. A new rainbow referee. As soon as I say play, I'll start, it'll be play for you guys as well, okay? Yeah, 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 okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've had two fantastic days here at the National Academy of the uh, Austrian Bidders and Snooker Association. The warmth we've had, the welcome we've had, uh, the foods that we've had, thanks to Wolfgang and uh, uh, Didier, thank you so much, it's been fantastic. Um, we love being here, it is wonderful. We are so thrilled that one of our finalists has travelled a long way to be with us, uh, and also somebody else from Middlesbrough. Um, well, as you know, we've had difficulties with the Indian players being allowed to come and play here. Uh, I won't get political, but I'm so thrilled that you have made the journey. Please go back to your federation and say, this is what we want to do. We love bidders, we want the best players in the world playing in the best possible conditions that you have here. Tell them they're making a mistake, please, and let your friends or colleagues play in the World Championships or whatever. We want you there because the game is enriched by your presence and we love it. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, uh, making the final here of the Austrian Open, a wonderful, wonderful player, an absolute gentleman, and he flies the flag so well for his home country as an ambassador and as a true sportsman. Drew van Sitwala. <laughs> In the final, a man who, as those of us mere mortals who play this wonderful game, who know what it's like to spend two hours making 400 points, and then he makes a break of 706 in the earlier semi-final. He is an extraordinary cute man. He's a great sense of humor. I know he has this dour face on him sometimes, but actually, when you get underneath the man from Pittsburgh, he's one of the nicest guys you can ever meet. He is one of the fastest players you'll ever see, one of the most talented, and I'm completely unbiased because he's a great friend to me, and he's the father of two of my children. But ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, all the way from Middlesbrough, one of the all-time greats of a human who plays billiards, and we are thrilled and honoured to look forward to this fantastic final, Mr. Dave Cosier. <laughs> so, uh, uh, 
said, oh, well, we're just going to get the we'll have some, we're going to straight. Okay, we went straight then, yes. And then a uh, big thanks to Andreas who's inside with our streaming and to our normal streamer, Sam Jones, who was uh, taking part in the competition this week. So having watched him take part, we look forward to him doing the streaming at the next event. That went over there. Okay, so you, you're ready to tell me. So for Andreas on the streaming, Drew will be breaking with the yellow and they will be playing white. Okay, this will be a return to play for the Challenge Cup semi-finals and this will be the start of the final. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy billiards of the highest possible quality. As I say, 90 minutes, play. Fifteen.
Well, hello to everybody who's just joining us to watch the final live here from Austria. Uh, Dave Cause here against Drew Sidwala. I'm Angus McAnally. I've been in the tournament director's chair for the, the weekend. And with me is uh, a man without whom this tournament simply wouldn't have happened, Patrick Stegmaier. Patrick, it, it's meant a lot to you to have this tournament here. Absolutely. Hello to everybody from my side. And yeah, um, it's great to have this tournament uh, back again in Vienna after 2019. And um, just uh, to witness now uh, two of, I think, the greatest billiards ambassadors you can have in a, in a final is, is just great for us Austrians. Well, I think anybody who was watching the semi-final to see Dave Cosier make a 706 yeah, break tremendous, isn't was it? absolutely tremendous. Yeah. And also Drew uh, playing some lovely billiards. Yeah. Um, a much slower player than Dave, much more deliberate, but beautiful connection. His attention to detail and how he plays his cannons and developing the ball. Absolutely, absolutely. And maybe it's about this kind of authenticity that these two players have in their games. And like, uh, as you said, Drew is maybe a little bit more the thinker of the game. And Dave, Dave's style is very natural, isn't it? Yeah. And shot maker supreme. Um, uh, with a shot like this now, he should be able to control the balls in two or three shots to get absolutely. to the top of the table where he likes to be. A 90-minute match, so mere mortals like yourself and myself might score yeah, yeah. 300, 350 <laughs> points, uh, and they, Dave might expect to do uh, seven, eight, nine hundred uh, points uh, or uh, more. Uh, absolutely. I mean, in, 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 when he made this uh, 706 in the semifinals, I just said five minutes before it was over that um, it's a pity that he isn't able to do a thousand break. Um, after that, he missed, but. Um, <laughs> Maybe we're not going to see a thousand break. <laughs> well, just as we mentioned a moment ago, suddenly he has a chance to uh, maybe run through the red here mm -hmm. and then a little bit of right hand side. So yeah. when he plays the cannon off the yellow, Absolutely. he will send the yellow ball behind the bigger spot and yeah. just flick off the red and leave the pot onto the corner pocket. His favorite position of playing the floating white, so to say, what would be floating yellow in that case. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. From that position, the opponent knows, um, hopefully, to be seated comfortably. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave really is a wonderful top of the table player, but yeah. in speaking to him, he always says that the basis of a good game of billiards is your long in off game. Yeah. You must be able to, and by that, for those who don't play billiards, the idea that what would be a foul in snooker is a scoring shot in billiards. So, the white, Absolutely. he would be playing the white into the corner pocket here. Yeah. And hello to Alex Dunn, who's watching us live on the show, and to Brian Barnett, a fellow Middlesbrough player. And uh, as you said, Angus, we have the, the, the drop cannon here, which is the, the key shot uh, for, for the game. Um, they've used to play the top table game. Yeah. And a little bit of check side there, just yeah. to try and that's left in that instance, right hand side. So we may say, Dave, just gently send the red towards the pocket and make the cannon onto the yellow. Okay. Just a little bit of side there. And suddenly this is where he shines. So I wouldn't be surprised if he gets into a perfect position here that he could make a, a sizable yeah. break. Now this shot is for adjusting the yellow to get it behind the red ball. Ah, OK, thinner than I expected. So in off the red, bring the red out to the middle of the table and play the drop cannon then, unless he fancies all around the house yeah. uh, playing the pot. It's <laughs> going for a and gentle Kevin, pot. Kevin Christie, one of our billiard referees based in Dublin, mm -hmm. is just in from work, so watching the final. Good evening to you. Uh, to Kevin and John Metcalf, delighted to see Drew playing this weekend. He said it's going to be tough against the machine. <laughs> Many people call Dave the machine. So this is a perfect opportunity now for Dave to play the drop cannon. The yellow will go off the side cushion and come down and join near behind the red there. What is very interesting to see is that sometimes it takes a few uh, chances to, to, to get into this favorite position. So he's not happy with the top table position yet, but he's working on it. 
very hard. Um, I guess uh, a, f a, f a few uh, players, the shot he, he made before uh, mm. the drop cannon would have said that this is the perfect position, but for him it's not, no. because it's just fine little adjustments that he knows that make that makes it possible yeah. for him to make the. Can he make the six shot points. here? No, he's going to play yeah. the losing in off. Yeah. He's going to play mm -hmm. the cue ball into the opposite. Uh, corner pocket here, mm -hmm. and the red will come out to the middle of the table. And now, if he plays the in off red into the center, and this time he might leave the red down mm -hmm. at the billiard spot. Yeah, he's quite happy with the yellow. Oh, he's, oh, he's bringing it back up again, so he's going to run the red a couple of times mm -hmm. until he gets yeah. it. Or he may get the drop cannon here. So. The yellow will go off two cushions and the red mm -hmm. will go towards the corner pocket. There's the first cushion, there's the second cushion and the red towards the corner pocket. So not completely perfect top of the table position yet, Patrick. Not not yet, yeah. But he's, he's working hard on it and... But you can see in every shot he's making that this target is, 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 is just um, there. He wants to go to the top and... Mm. Lots of right hand side on yeah. the cue ball this time. No. The problem with this shot was to lose the red to the cushion, but maybe mm. he can can play a gentle um, cannon to the yellow. Mm -hmm. Or maybe even the. Uh, would he take the double red? I think he might go the skinny cannon with left hand side. Now, this is a hard shot now if he's going to swing this into mm -hmm. the top right hand corner. Yeah, it was just a difficult shot there. Mm -hmm. Now, well, the white is safe, and what has he left to the red? So, 82 <laughs> points to 19. So, we may see some safety shots here because both of these players fully respect each other. Patrick. Absolutely, absolutely. And the safety shots in billiards, um, they are very often underrated. Um, of course, for every shot there is a chance to, to make a score, but it's not about the score, it's, mm -hmm. about, uh, it's about what you leave after the score. And, um, mm -hmm. You could maybe go for the in of red. Trying to get into a break situation. I think he's worried that it's a power in off, yeah. so the red mm. might end up in the balk area. So mm. he may also just pot the white and play safe. The 90 minute format is a very interesting format for these kind of players because because any any high break could be decisive because you just run out of time um, and that's what you said. Uh, the defense is is very important at this stage of the game. Yeah. Any mistake of both players could lead to a 400-500 break, which could be decisive over 90 minutes. Now, has he gone too far? Can he mm. get in off the yellow here? It looks a narrow enough angle. Mm -hmm. Maybe thin with power. Yeah. Uh, lovely use of right hand side yeah, just to. Absolutely. Uh, one of the great things about billiards is that the cue ball control you can have by putting side on the ball absolutely. And can make the angle bigger or smaller. Absolutely. Billiards beginners are taught to, to, to play the, the half ball a contact, um, but the professionals, they know where to address and where to hit the cue ball. Um, it's not only a half ball game for them, isn't it? It's. it's, yeah. it's, it's and once again, David's positional yeah. play there to get the perfect contact. Yeah, that's slightly awkward. Mm -hmm. you, can you can in off the red. Yeah. Beautiful control to play that slowly. Now he has to play the a couple of in-offs. Mm -hmm. 
into the pocket beside where his name is on the bottom of your screen. 17. I will go for the pot, maybe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Take the opportunity. And on behalf of World Billiards, Patrick, may I thank you and the Austrian Association for all your help to make this tournament happen. Uh, certainly all of the players who've come from Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, Canada, uh, India, uh, Austria, of course, have really, really enjoyed the facilities here. Um, Renata and uh, Wolfgang's food here has been wonderful. <laughs> um, your local referees uh, yeah. and the welcome that we've yeah. had has been yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely, and thank you for, for, for inviting us to, to host this, 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 this event. And for me, billiards events are not only the sport events, but also the socializing events, you know. Sure. I think it's very, yeah. very much appreciated by many players. Well, now Dave has the yellow exactly where he wants it, so it's either a question of playing a couple of in off until he gets a pot red or a nice drop cannon again. Maybe one more to adjust the red. Oh, he's going for the pot now. Yeah. Yeah. The speed yeah. on these tables, absolutely beautiful. They, they release the full pace of the shot you take. Yeah, absolutely. You can, you can let your cue do the work. <laughs> yeah. So two choices here to either bring the cue ball off the cushion onto the yellow or right in front of it. And right. just mm -hmm. using a little bit of left hand side mm -hmm. there, it, it moves the white in front of the yellow. So normally one would expect Dave to make a sizable break from this position. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of right hand side again. Little adjustment on the yellow. So a little skinny and off now yeah. to leave the long pot, I think. Mm -hmm. Unless he can pot, maybe he feels... Oh, he, it looks possibly too tight. I uh, know Dave's going to go for his extension his and yeah, yeah. Christian Fock, referee who got his class one referee, the yeah. highest grade referee you can have. But congratulations to him. I was on the examination panel. I hope I wasn't too hard on it. <laughs> I think he's very happy about that. And, um, so I think uh, so. the billiard players should watch. I think Dave will play drag on them. By, by that I mean he will hit the cue ball low and it will be spinning backwards for most of the journey and then it will only start going forward. But there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can avoid a roll off by by that, and of course controlling the the, the object ball. So perfect, perfect position now for the drop cannon, just to send the yellow ball towards the top cushion here. I think it's maybe full face. Perfect. Wonderful. Yeah. Now he may play off the yellow here just mm -hmm. to move the red towards the pocket, and that's what he's done Absolutely. while maintaining perfect position. So now again, he's back where he wants to be. It's funny to watch that we, we we were able to to see that he um, was able to build this top table position for many times now, but never he was never really happy with mm. it uh, yet because he always had to um, rebuild it. And now he seems to be a little bit low on this run, mm -hmm. so he may decide to go all the way around the, the table to come back. Yeah. Yes. Very Lots confident. of right hand side yeah. and wonderful control from Dave there. So if he puts this a second time off the spot, uh, it will come up to the middle of the table to the center spot. And that's what he's mm -hmm. done. Yeah. Lots of right hand side needs to get the beyond the, uh, the second uh, yeah. Christian there just uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah. momentarily unsure but it, it happens to us all Christian so I think he's playing the in off here oh no he went for the pot he's going for the pot yeah. oh yeah, yeah. I will be getting a ribbing from Dave when he watches this back <laughs> what do you mean he's going for the in off <laughs> oh okay unexpected there's something you don't see very often yeah, absolutely it's a chance for truth now to get back into the yes. match and um, 
I think he will be very happy to to, to get into the match after the first 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, so he he needs... was more a spectator than, a, than an yeah. actor in that final. And that's a good chance for him. Yeah, in a few minutes there will be the start of the of the plate competition. Yes, um, the Challenge Cup, and you very kindly have yeah. agreed to referee that for us. Yeah, looking forward to it. So now he will leave the red down on the top cushion here, and oh, he's made that slightly narrower than I thought he would. So a little drop cannon here now to promote the red into a potable position, perhaps. Doesn't want the white to come in front of the yellow and to block him. And I think the white, can he see to the edge of the red to go in off? Or does he have to play a little cannon? He may go around two cushions. Mm -hmm. Unless he can see, he may be able to just go in off the white. If it's slightly covered, it could be, mm -hmm. could be a really tricky shot. Uh. Yeah, and it's yeah, oh, it's a tricky yeah. shot. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Just the pace of the table didn't and that that'll be a a source of great disappointment to Drew because that was a perfect scoring opportunity. Mm -hmm. So the yellow is no good to David where he is there. So at some stage he'll want to play in and off mm -hmm. just to bring the yellow up the table. Yeah. And leave a drop cannon position to get back to what we call top of the table. Now, David, being careful not to stretch. I think in the past he had a tendency to lean over and sort of put himself at an angle, but now he's much more disciplined and will take the long rest. So. We're all learning. Yep. <laughs> and again, I think that's wonderful control of the yellow ball Absolutely. to leave the perfect so angle. Th these balls that are near to the cushion, when you play these little in-offs, they are just about pace and to control yep. them is, is just key shot here. And so back to prime position. Well, uh, not quite. He's still... Yeah, not lucky with that little contact. Okay. Now, in off the yellow. Probably have to play this full ball run through. On the right hand side, they're bringing the. So he didn't want the yellow ball on the side cushion, but he can, he can uh, move that now in a while. These kind of shots make maybe the difference between the really really good players and 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 uh, the good players because for them this is a standard shot. Sure. And I just think um, Drew getting that cover may be a pivotal point in the f in the final because he had an opportunity to get back level terms perhaps with Dave, uh, whereas now he's what you know yeah, it's maybe, maybe a 150 to, points uh, behind very quickly uh, and he's starting to think about it. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I tell you what, um, both Patrick and I are going to uh, go off headphones for a moment now. Um, so please do continue to watch this live stream. Uh, we have some business to attend to. Absolutely. <laughs>
four. Six. Baby calls her five. Seven.
Fifteen. Seventy-four. 
76. Fourteen. Well, this is Angus McAnally rejoining the commentary position here for the final of the um, the Austrian Open here at the wonderful Academy in Vienna. And Dave Causey with a commanding lead at the moment. And joining me in comments, commentary position, uh, Christian Kirk. Uh, welcome to the commentary box, Christian. This is a, an education watching billiards with high standard, isn't it? It absolutely is, yeah. Thanks very much, Angus, for having me along. And uh, yeah, fantastic to be watching um, this artistry here from Dave. The 700 break was very special. 
Absolutely, it was unfortunate I missed it. I was playing Drew in the semi-final. Yeah, and Drew was a much slower player, much more deliberate and methodic, but his control was absolutely delightful. His drop cannon position he always seemed to eke out the correct angle and the correct in off. Absolutely, yeah. He had a couple of um, fairly sizable visits as well. Yeah. Not semi-final, which helped him out, of course, but he's a beautiful player, beautiful to watch, and, you know, it's testament to Dave's ability here. I'm sure he can't even get to the table for the last, last 20 or 30 minutes, so, um, yeah, it just shows how well Dave's playing as well. But watching your match, I was taken by the fact that whenever Drew missed, you were left nothing. You were coming to the table with having to either play safe or try a mad kind of a shot that was very difficult. Yeah, I struggled, struggled a bit for, for an easy leave, but... Um, but yeah, and the pressure's on, obviously, when you're sitting multiple points behind and um, you're playing someone with Drew's ability, then the pressure's on to score too, so you kind of have to go for your shots, not the policy I adopted for the semi-final yeah. anyway. But it's great to have Drew playing again because we haven't seen enough Indian players coming over this side of the pond. Um, for a variety of reasons which we won't go into at the moment but let's hope that uh, whatever difficulties there are in terms of permissions being granted or not to the Indian players certainly on behalf of World Billards we want to see them playing in our World Championships in Carlo in April we're, we're in Jersey in May Absolutely, yeah I think I think speak on behalf of all the players when I say that um, we'd love to see all the Indian players back back then again And you had quite a contingent here this weekend. You had Dom Halligan, you had Kenny Campbell. We did, yeah, and all, all performed quite well, I think, um, including Corbin Lowe, who I know lives in, in England, but it's very much Northern Irish through and through. The four of us made the last 16, which is yeah. quite an achievement. So, um, yeah, everybody's very happy and um, delighted for my, my friends from home, both Dom and, and Kenny, both put in some real solid performances. So... Fantastic. Long may I continue, Angus. Well, you're a, a very proficient player. What do you take from watching Drew, watching Dave, and how they play the game? Um, see, to be honest, it, it looks like they've got all three balls on a string at times. Um, they kind of make the game look incredibly easy when it's it's the complete opposite, you know. Um, I think this control in around the top, the consistency they've got when they get the balls there is just phenomenal. So a little bit of left-hand side now off the cushion and just see the white springs across there. Uh, Dave can either take the very skinny pot in here or I was going to play the cannon off the yellow. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I'll pay for that tonight now when he looks yeah. back at it. Um, He's looking for a red one on the top of the table, I think, yeah. Angus. Um, Absolutely. He's with the speed of it. He made 900 points in one of his matches uh, yesterday. And if you think about it, these are one hour matches, so 60 minutes. So 900 points is, and he got 920 in fact. So that's 15 points every single minute of the entire game. And if you think that a pot or an enough, the, the white or yellow is two and the red is three. So there are six or seven visits per minute which is seven or eight yeah. seconds. So if you think of the shot clock in snooker, it, it wouldn't even no. cost Dave a thought. Yeah, it's incredible. It's just, that's just an incredible rate of scoring for a 60 minute match, to be honest. Um, personally, I think it's two things. I think it's the speed that his brain works at to know the right shot, but also the end result of the previous shot is the perfect position, so he doesn't have to wonder about what he was yeah. going to do next. Doesn't have to think too much, that's right. That shot he's just played there, I think, is one of his really lovely, delicate shots where he screws in off but keeps pace on the, as it is the yellow ball there, quite gently. So we all tend to play those too hard and the ball goes into balk and you Absolutely. lose the ball. In bulk or line on the cushion. Line on the like. cushion, exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah, if you play this in off, it, they very rarely touch the side here. Look at that, straight Look in. Look at the red up for yep. pot and he's back at the top again, perhaps. Well, he's suddenly actually. heading for a 400 point lead with at the halfway stage yeah. now there's no doubt about it Drew Sidwala can make a 400 break 
but the pressure must mount on a player when you realise you have to hold the table for the entire duration of the remaining match. Absolutely. It's certainly not beyond his ability, but it's a very big ask. We'll be seeing you in the SBI Academy for the Irish Open and the World uh, Match Play in, absolutely, in April. Yeah, I think that, that's earmarked as my, my next one, um, Angus, for sure. Unfortunately, won't make, won't make the Jersey event, but... Um, Which but yeah, is ir to... ironic because you spend one week a month in Jersey, uh, yeah, I believe, well, with, I with work. To, I used to. I've changed, I've changed jobs recently and i um, not spent quite as long out there now, so... Um, so, so yeah, but but really looking forward to the event in Ireland. It's you know it's definitely one of the highlights of the calendar for me. Um, since I played it a couple of times now, I just I couldn't miss it to be honest. Um, it's a fantastic venue, much like here, but a fantastic venue. Hos hospitality is great. Hotel accommodation is fantastic. Um, and, and yeah, just a great great week of billiards. So I'm really looking forward to that one. The previous shot before the pot there from Dave was a, a classic trademark Causier shot where he played the cannon but sent the yellow off the side cushion and back into behind the billiard spot. So it's perfectly positioned for top of the table now. He'll take another pot off the spot here. And some people were wondering uh, why occasionally the red ball is put on the centre spot of the table. Well, that's you're only allowed potted twice in a row off the, uh, the spot here. After which, if you don't make a cannon, uh, the red will go up onto the centre spot and then come back down again. So that's why Dave will do a series, a, a sequence of a pot, a pot off the spot, and then a cannon. Oh, and there's an unusual one for Dave. A break 259. So he's a lead of some 419 points at the moment. So a lot of pressure on. Sidwala, I often liken this to the notion of having to go across the Niagara Falls with, without a safety net, that you cannot afford to slip a footing at all. That's, that's right. I think he, he really needs to do some damage these next couple of visits, or I think any opportunity left is probably, probably gone. Now, if he's, can he get skinny and off this without moving the red? That's a nice shot. Yes. Well, he really needs now to get the perfect drop cannon position here where the white will come off the side cushion, heading heading down towards the, the billiard spot and the red will head towards the corner pocket. So that's the first part and the second part executed. It doesn't want to co a cover on the red. I think he may have got it. Just so he, can, he, there. he can't actually see the red now. So options here to try and put the red with the white, which is difficult. Or can he go over and back? Can he get run through with lots of sides? Be able to run through both, yeah. So I think that's what he's played, but he's... Yes, he was playing the run through. I saw you play three or four of those beautifully yesterday, where when all the balls are in each other's way, you simply just put lots of running side or reverse side and make sure this cue ball runs along the cushion and goes in off. Absolutely, and that's... You asked earlier on, you know, what are you looking for in these top players? That's actually a shot I picked up from uh, Dave. Dave seems to play that quite very well indeed, so... Um, oh, that's he'd be disappointed now to break down. And I think it was the initial cannon that he played where he just didn't get prime position. What's Dave going for here? Yeah, it, it looked like he was taking the pot on, so... Mm -hmm. um, that shows how intense Dave is to, to run a few reds and then double walk through. He's not taking any chances. It shows the respect he has Absolutely. for Drew well. Yeah, and these relatively short games as well. I can count for a lot, just keeping keeping it tight, not letting your opponent in easily. Counts for a lot too. So he just leave both balls uh, in balk here now. A nice easy opening shot, and because both balls are behind the balk line, uh, when Drew comes to the table, he cannot play these balls directly. So he's either going to play safe, or he will try and play a lot of side and move the balls. No, he's just simply putting his cue ball safe. Although, is there anywhere safe when Dave's at the table now? I was just about to say, he's a brave man. Um, Dave has a habit of creating shots that aren't really there, to be honest. 
And as soon as he can, he'll try and leave an angle to be able to go in off the yellow, bring it out of balk. So pot red. And he may take a couple of reds here off the spot, bring the red ball up to the centre of the table, and then he can play a cannon onto the yellow or indeed line up for the enough. So after this next pot on the red, it will go up to the uh, centre pot. Watch the left-hand side on the ball now as it springs up. Look at that running side there. Just So now he's just checking the angle here. Where does he want to leave the white ball in order to be able to get in off? Just there. And these are ominous signs for Drew in this final with just 38 minutes more or less left to go. Because mm -hmm. if Dave gets the yellow nicely out into play and can bring it down to the top of the table, there's certainly another big break waiting. Oh, and that's a, that's an unusual miss. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, Neither was indeed. Dave. Mm -hmm. Uncharacteristic indeed. Little grimace on the face of Dave Carson from Middlesbrough. So nicely in off into the right hand corner pocket to leave the white ball for. Ooh. Well, I tell you, that's not a bad result, actually. Um, is Dave going for a power in off or two cushion cannon? One, two. Yeah, oh, oh he's just, just missed it. Bad. So. 37 and a half minutes left in this 2024 Austrian Open here, the WBL tournament in Vienna. It's been a fantastic weekend, actually a fantastic weekend of billiards and um, yeah, the venue and the, um, the Austrian Association here, great hosts. Um, and uh, yeah, great one to have back on the calendar. Actually, I think the last one was 2019, um, if I'm correct. So yes, indeed. And um, before the the interruption, the interruption of COVID. So um, so yeah, fantastic to have this event here again, and it's a place I enjoy coming as well. We were here in November playing um, in the, in the Four, Four Nations, Nations International, which yeah. was fantastic too. So um, so yeah, it's a really really good venue, and um, Austrians are fantastic hosts. Pressure on this pot now for Drew because. He really needs to get some traction going here. Oh, look at that. Great pot. And being the sportsman he is, a, a tap on the knee there from Dave. So Drew having a look to see if he pots the red. Where does he want to leave the yellow ball so that he can get in off that white? This is just an awkward enough angle now. It's neither the half ball enough nor the direct potting angle. So needs to be careful here. And he's missed it, I think. Yeah. And that's all due to pressure. From that camera angle, they look easy, don't they? <laughs> but they're just not. Screwing off to the centre for Dave. Yeah. It's a lovely shot. And D Dave plays these beautifully because he has positioned virtually on one shot the yellow where he wants it, but he may play another in off. And he's going for the... His potting is normally fantastic. Well, I thought he might have played in off white to make it a better uh, situation for the drop cannon, but he's going full blooded for this yeah but why wouldn't you when you can pot like that from distance exactly doesn't want to pot the yellow well however he just run a couple of reds and then play that double box situation again well i'm sure as you watched drew playing in your semi-final you couldn't imagine him scoring 62 points after absolutely not nearly, nearly an hour. It, it, feels, it feels a little bit like role reversal this match to be <laughs> honest that's kind of how my match with uh drew panned out um but yeah he does seem to have just struggled for scoring quite quite as much in this game but i, I do think when you play dave but he has a habit of making even the best player look relatively mm. average and um, Drew's played exceptional all weekend, so um, yeah. 
But I think that missed opportunity early on in the match, as I mentioned at the time, may come back to haunt him. It was a chance to get in, and even though he needed a century break to get level with Dave, but there was a, a fairly straightforward opportunity by his standards. Um, and suddenly now, um, in another another 200 points from Dave, and it would be an unassailable lead, I think, because players at this standard can make 100 in maybe four and a half, five minutes. So. There's only 34 minutes left, and Dave's heading for a 500-point lead now and another 40 points or whatever. So the long end off, and the red around two or three cushions. Another loser again, another uh, in off into the, the corner beside his name. Now is he trying to bring this right up to the as close as he dared to the bog line to leave himself in and off. He could pot this and run through a couple of inches if he wanted to, but still those corner pockets are tight. He may just run through and play another half ball in off. Down for the pot. So a perfect angle now to pop the red and you go in the centre spot and you go up to the bulk area to... Oh my gosh, just took his eyes off the ball there. That's most unusual. He's so perfectly positioned for the in-off yellow, but uh, he'd be disappointed to miss that. Unlucky there. Well, he, oh, he just has enough angle there. Yeah. Just needs to make a 200 break here, I would think, Christian, to get himself back into the match with any chance. Absolutely. I think even now that's a very big ask from here. Not impossible, but... Hasn't quite got the red down far enough, so a very gentle screwing off here. And the side that he used on the cue ball, creating check side on the red so that it stopped the red from going up into the bulk area. So imagine saying to Dave Causer, I'll play you a match over a half an hour and I'll give you 450 points start. That's effectively the situation for Drew now. But he's played that well now to leave himself the perfect drop cannon position. So if he can get them to the top of the table and hold it there, he could make a sizable break. But I would think he'll have to take up the pace of his play ever so slightly because he's a, a very wonderful, slow, methodical player. Whereas Dave can, as I said, play six or seven shots per minute. So there's a lot of pressure on Drew now. There is indeed. Certainly gonna need to hold the table for for a while. Just just feels like some of his shots he's just he just hasn't hasn't quite got them perfect or maybe the feel for the table and it's obviously been largely down to Dave having the majority of the table time so far, so So he needs 440 points approximately without reply from Dave if he's to get past the winning post here. So a great test of your stamina, your metal, your ability. But in fairness to him, one shot at a time and just... Don't miss. Yep. Simple as that. Yeah, that sounds so easy, doesn't it? Yep. Um, but it's, it's difficult as well. It's a you know, long day of billiards as well for these guys have played what maybe must be nearly up to six hours now. Um, you know, against quality opposition, it's tough mentally taxing as well. So, um, yeah, it's a real test of his metal. 
another drop cannon now. Needs to push the red off the side cushion and over towards where the white is. Yeah. Again, he's need, just. I think he's just slightly out of position. Isn't yeah, struggling to get through. It. Perfect, but I, I still fully expect him to get this. I think Loads he's of left hand side. The white will get out of the way, and the now you see the lovely side there. Bring the cue ball into the pocket. Just about wide enough for the drop cannon. Although I think an in off would probably be better. Oh, he's, he he feels he can get it with lots of left hand side. No, it, it just felt a little bit on the tight side there. So he'll be hoping the white ball will end up exactly where it is, except on the other side of the table after this shot. Which he managed to achieve, however, yeah, this will be interesting. Probably like to screw this across, I would imagine. Yeah. Difficult shot to get possession from, of course. You're forcing it like that, but... Well, now we'll we see Dave playing a safety shot here. Doesn't, send, help. Send doesn't happen very often, let's be honest. Well, there you are now. <laughs> Somebody must have a word in his ear at the moment, because he's certainly <laughs> playing occasionally different style shots. And that must be so frustrating when you're chasing a score and you just have to wait your time. And with each of these safety exchanges eating into the remaining minutes in the match, so this is a little cannon with lots of check side off the top cushion. And he's got that well nicely positioned, nice see the white ball behind and to one side, so the floating white position as we call it for a top of the table play. Certainly looks like Mr. Cozier's high break of 700 is going to stand. Yes, I, I would think see, so. Um, can't see anybody. Well, there's only 26 minutes left, so I think it's well, impossible. Well, it, a 400 case, break but. is possible, but as you say, it's no miss billiards. He simply has to maintain perfect position. And even at that now, it's tough just to screw in off and control the red. Uh, that needs to bounce off the cushion, and that's not ideal. Will he risk the long jenny into the corner pocket with loads of left-hand sides? It's a tough shot. He may feel he has no option if he's to keep the score going. Because if he plays a safety shot, he's handing the initiative back to Dave. So if he's playing this loads of left-hand side, you'll see the spinning spots. There it goes, spinning down. And it was a tough ask, but I wouldn't be surprised if Dave pots the yellow and puts both balls into Bok. <laughs> Loads of right hand side just to send the cue ball up to the Bok area. And certainly this is vintage stuff from Dave when your opponent is chasing a score give them no opportunity whatsoever it's also an interesting object lesson in how to play oh that was so unlucky he had a great great effort at trying to make a score happen there very difficult but I think that's perhaps the first time all weekend I've actually seen Drew attempt a hit in the bulk. Yes. He's very he strategic. Tends to take this medicine his, and just yeah, play he does. safe. He does. Um, you know, which is perhaps a little indicator just of his eagerness to try and get back at the table and 
try and try and string some more points together. Wow. Oh, that's a and that's a, a cruel blow now because not only has he fluked the red, but he's landed the cue ball on the exact half pole position. So in off in the corner, red up and down the middle of the table. And the yellow is in the ball carries a moment, but uh, Dave can run the red a couple of times or and either bring the red up towards the walk line beside the yellow or just leave a pot. Yeah, I think he's just positioning the red as slow. Oh, slow down. Has he measured that to perfection? It's just it's, about stopped yeah. in time. It's, um, the table's playing very, this table's playing very fast. They've yeah. played a couple of games on the last two days. and um, Yeah, it's sometimes quite hard to judge that bounce off the top cushion. Um, yeah, conditions are perfect. And it's certainly becoming harder and harder now for groups like World Billiards to find a venue where you can have absolute top class conditions with, you know, the very best of tables, the very best of cloths, the speed of the table, the under table heaters. It's a huge ask and it's, it's very difficult for club owners to maintain to a standard like this. So we're privileged and fortunate to have the National Academy here of the Austrian Association uh, with wonderful conditions. Absolutely. I think uh, a lot of the clubs back home, you would perhaps get a table or two to the standard, but very rarely do you get a club large enough that um, is also willing to support um, these, you know, these great events. So, um, so yeah, it's fantastic. So a little in off the yellow to leave a drop cannon. Well, a bit like the American TV networks when they called the presidential election. I'm going to call it now. I, I think this is Dave's. I don't think that Drove can score enough in 22 minutes. Uh, it's a huge commanding lead from Dave. And I think it all pivoted in that first 15 minutes when Drove had an opportunity and I think didn't really score from it whatsoever and also let Dave back in. So, um, But it's still fantastic to see him back playing in Europe and we hope that he and his, his fellow players will spend more time here than they have been of late. Absolutely, he's travelled a long way obviously to come and, come and play and support the event which is which is great so hopefully um, yeah hopefully we'll see a few more of um, a few more of the Indian players um, in Ireland all being well. It would be fantastic. So Dave can relax now. I think he knows that this is in the bag. He'd be delighted to take the trophy back to Middlesbrough. And he's one of the hardest workers that I've ever known in the game of billiards. He prepares for weeks in advance. For He's going to miss this yeah, for weeks in advance. And he's in the club playing two or three or four hours a day for five or six weeks before all major tournaments. And he won't take a drink when he's out. There's no socializing. A question here from Alex Don says, how much does Dave give Angus when we play each other? Well, I can tell you, uh, we play one hour matches in my house when Dave comes and stays and he gives me 400 points start. And I have, I, in fact, I've beaten him once when I scored a 70 break uh, early on in the game. And other than that, I have never beaten him. It's quite extraordinary. Um, he's a machine. The speed with which he can score is absolutely incredible. So thanks to everybody who's been watching on our YouTube channel and thanks to Andreas here for the streaming and of course to Sam Jones uh, from the Yorkshire Project, DYP, TYP, who does all the WBL streaming. It will be in Carlo, it will be in Jersey. Uh, but it's wonderful to be able to share these and also to have a library now of matches that you can look back on. Although I was on the match table at the streaming table yesterday and I wish I wasn't because <laughs> it's not one that I'd be uh, printing and sending to my grandchildren to, to remember me by. <laughs> so, proved nicely on the, uh, the half ball line. 
Thank thanks the, to um, CW Steiner for keeping us up to date on the social media content. Absolutely. I think the streaming table angles just go back to your previous point. It's a bit of a habit of doing that this all, doesn't it? Yes. You, you just feel the extra pressure of um, the cameras being on. It's very um, good for the humility, I find. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. But you've been knocking in 300 breaks recently in a couple of tournaments, Christian. Yeah, yeah, I've been playing quite well on the, the kind of local national circuit. Um, yeah, like the, the standard of billiards in the country has actually, I would say, increased considerably in the last couple of years. But a few new faces come in um, and we have a fairly healthy sort of national scene um, with, with sort of five or six ranked events and of course Northern Ireland Championship played. So, um, so yeah, I've been playing, playing pretty well, but um, but yeah, I think a lot of that's just down to a bit more practice and also um, learning a lot from these events, you know, and seeing seeing how the top guys play and trying to pick up some of those shots and um, almost just plagiarise those when I get home, to be entirely honest. Um, so, so yeah, it's... Um, and is the Four Nations heading to Bangor in the not-so-distant future? Um, so I think we're still a couple of years away. I think this year is due to be in uh, Landywood in November, so I think England are host nations. Um, we we kind of struggle a little bit in the north for a venue with, with a suitable amount of tables, Angus. So, mm. um, so yeah, I mean, we'd love to have it in, in, in the north um, of Ireland. Um, it's just getting, getting a suitable venue. I, I think the, the intention is for the next Friendly Cup, which is the Northern Ireland versus England in, annual international, um, we would look to um, look to use one of our one of our venues for mm -hmm. sure, but obviously there's only a requirement for four tables for that one, so it's a little bit easier to find a club. Um, well, we look forward to playing up there again, and this is important now for Drew. Uh, he'd like to hold the table f for a variety of reasons. I mean, it, if he can make a hundred in four and a half five minutes, he can still post a very good score. He may feel that if he can take up the pace a little bit, that there may still be enough time. Uh, and then that's just gone a little bit awry. A couple of options here. He could play the run through and off, or he could screw in off the red, or perhaps try for the cannon, but very difficult to control the position of the balls after a shot like that. Could play the cannon onto the red. I think he's playing the run through. It's quite difficult from here. Yeah, I think there was a fear of the double kiss there. I think. Yeah. Um, he's trying to steal it a little bit in the pocket, so um, makes a shot much more difficult, of course. That's a lovely shot. Well, to, to, to not pot the yellow there was a wonderfully yeah. crafted shot there. Pot red would leave the in off yellow if he wants it. Yeah, that's why I just stopped the cue ball stone dead. So I would expect on this shot, maybe uh, yellow up and down. Oh, look at that. The control to be able to play that gently to leave the drop cannon. Yeah, any chance to get these <laughs> perfect more or less every time. Um, it's over around the danger zone. The other thing that Dave does, which is very frustrating, and I say that as a compliment to him, is that you're playing him and he's on a break of maybe 300, 350, and he appears to be out of position. He plays this incredible rescue shot, and the balls come down perfectly to a drop gun in position. Then he gets down to top of the table, and we start again, and the break continues, and you're going, you, you, you're lulled into a false sense of security that you may actually have a chance to, 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 to play. You know? Yeah.
Well, Christian Kirk, thank you so much for joining us in the commentary position here for the wonderful Austrian Open. It's a pleasure to have you on board. No problem. And I hope you've enjoyed your couple of days here. I have in indeed. Austria. I have indeed. Look, thank you very much, Angus. Thanks. Um, take care now. Bye. Hi everybody, and this is uh, Chris Coombe here alongside Darren Clark, just finishing the uh, commentary coverage for the remaining uh, 13 minutes of this great final we've been watching. Dave Corsier, fantastic performance today and indeed all weekend up against uh, Druv Sitwal in this uh, final. Great to see Druv here, we know he's a top class player from India and uh, hopefully we'll see a lot more of him in the coming tournaments and Darren what's your uh, thoughts been this has been a great final hasn't it I'm sure you agree yeah Chris I second what what you said there about Druv being here it's fantastic to see uh, the Indian representation um, Druv is a fantastic player currently the Indian village champion I believe but he's uh, he's coming up short here against Dave obviously Dave is in uh, great form had uh, a sizable break against myself in the semi-final um, and this table is a lot tougher than it actually looks um, so to make the break that he did is uh, some achievement really but we've had a great weekend fantastic conditions very thankful for the support from the Austrian Federation and we hope that you've all enjoyed watching the stream this weekend So a bit of a victory lap at the moment from Dave. Approaching 500 points in front. Yeah, and that break of 700 from Dave Corsier is not the only example of fantastic scoring from him this weekend. Because uh, in the uh, knockout stage yesterday, Corsier scored an, an amazing total, um, which uh, I'm just going to... It's 932 points in an hour's match against Fraser Durham from Canada. Fantastic uh, level of score. And we believe that is, um, at the World Billiards events, uh, that's a record in an hour's match of the total number of points scored. Chris Schutz, uh, a great player who's sadly not playing anymore, uh, made a, f what a, a score of 1,003 points in an hour, but uh, that was prior to uh, World Billiards in its current form. Um, but. Uh, both incredible sort of statistics, really, when you think about it. So, yeah, Dave's in fine form. And uh, as we've seen, this post was knock. With the opponent's cue ball, Grove's yellow ball tight against the top cushion. Sequence of cannons and pots. Dave Corsi is quite uh, happy to keep the balls in this position. I mean, we've seen him make five, six, seven hundred breaks like this in events previously, just maintaining that position. Some players prefer to revert to float and white, but Dave's quite happy to play either, and he plays it with such speed as well. Yeah, fantastic player from Dave. Um, like you say, Chris, I think a lot of the top players 
maybe don't favour this uh, method of top of the table, but Dave seems fairly happy with it. Obviously, Geek Sethi was a, a fantastic exponent of um, Postman's Knock. And Dave more recently seems to have uh, adopted that style a little more. Um, obviously, such a fantastic potter. Um, you need to be able to pot really well to play top of the table, but Postman's Knock especially, I think. Um, but it's just that great, great touch and the control that is showing here. Uh, break crosses the 100 mark. This is a great camera angle to see because the side on the cue ball, uh, not only to make the cannon if it's slightly wider or narrower than natural, but the, um, the side that uh, you can put on the cue ball actually uh, keeps the opponent's ball in, in the exact position where he wants it. That was what looked to be pretty much plain ball there. But if, for example, the uh, yellow in this case was just slightly to the left as we look, then uh, a bit of right-hand side on the cue ball can actually put it back the other way. <laughs> it uh, has the opposite effect, so we're only talking touches of side in a lot of cases, but that's what enables these players to keep the breaks going for long periods. But we just had to come away from that sequence for a moment. As the break reaches 118. Nineteen. Hundred eighteen, rather. Just looking at the monitor there. One, one, two, one. So wonderful. To see, Dave Corsi run out the remaining seven minutes or so of this final. He's got every chance of doing so. That's Christian Fock, the referee. Spots the red on the centre spot. Yeah, tough pop from Dave. Um, he misses that shot. Let's see what Druff can do. It'd be nice to see him maybe make a break himself to, to finish things off. Yeah, very top class potter is Dave, but I'm sure even with his intense powers of concentration, he realises that this. Obviously, we're getting towards the uh, the end of this uh, event. I'm sure he'll be using up the remainder of his uh, energies. Rick, it's a long day that. Uh, he would have played for uh, six hours today of uh, of billiards, so it does take a lot of uh, stamina, really, f mentally and physically, to uh, play f for that amount of time. Yeah, the levels of concentration do definitely wear you out. It's uh, it's been quite warm in, in Austria here today as well. Um, We've we've really enjoyed the venue, fantastic playing conditions, and we we look forward greatly to coming back. The next stop for the World Billiards Tour is the Walter Lindrum Open at the Mounties Club in uh, New South Wales, Australia. That's a level five event. After that, we move to Ireland the SBI Academy in Carlo for the Irish Open and the World Match Play. And then we're off to Jersey for the centenary event for the Jersey Bleeds and Snooker Association. Yeah, busy end of the season lined up for this uh, World Billiards calendar. And as was mentioned earlier, don't forget we've got all the uh, matches that were recorded during, over the last two days on two tables, which you can uh, watch back on YouTube on the World Billiards uh, channel.
So we've had a question on the YouTube feed from a Richard Ebden asking about the uh, various event levels for Wild Billiards. Uh, just to give you a brief explanation, uh, we have levels one to six, and basically the highest level, the level six event, are the two main events really on our calendar: the World Billiards Championship and the World Match Play Championship. Um, and uh, the higher the level, the, the more prize money and ranking points uh, that are on offer. The standards sort of event level, which is this event, for example, and a number of others like the English Open, the British Open, Scottish Open, etc. They're level three events. Um, sometimes we have a level four, but the most common ones are levels three, five and six. And it's just uh, the way we work out our ranking points. And, and like I said, the... Um, the level 5 and level 6 events particularly have uh, a bit more prize money on offer. But it's great to see um, some various countries represented. Obviously India here with Drips at Walla, which is fantastic as we said, and Fraser Durham from Canada who's currently playing in the Challenge Cup final against uh, local player Martin Smith. Austrian champion uh, a number of times. But after this final concludes, there'll be the presentation, so please uh, stay around for that. Um, and uh, I believe there'll be a, a few minutes remaining in the Challenge Cup final as well at, at the conclusion of this match. So once both have been finished, then the presentations will uh, get underway. But just to reiterate again, thanks to Andreas, who's provided our streaming coverage. Sam Jones has been helping out as well, um, which is uh, fantastic. And there we see the shot of the other side of the room there, Fraser Durham from Canada playing against Martin Smith. Angus McInally was commentating earlier alongside Patrick Stegmeyer from the Austrian Association and Christian Kirk as well. So thanks for their input. Angus has gone off to... Uh, be there for the conclusion. He's been uh, working very hard this weekend as uh, our tournament controller, refereeing, playing. So, busy weekend. This is a nice shot here of the recovery cannon. Red, cushion white. Bit of left hand side, just pushes that white up to the line. The line that's uh, the imaginary line that runs through the red spot. Anywhere close to there, you've got a chance of another recovery cannon here. This is the basis of floating white. And he's got a lovely cue action, doesn't he, Darren? Just such smooth. You never see him snatching anything, so he just goes straight through the ball, every flow and cue action. Ideal for billiards, really. That's what it's designed around, really, is his main cue yeah, spot. Yeah, very much so. I mean... I was lucky to practice with current world champion Peter Gilchrist for a good few weeks and he was telling me about the the pendulum motion so you can imagine a, a grandfather clock and, and the pendulum swinging underneath it never really changes pace um, and Druv very much so has that sort of pendulum action very smooth and clean uh, no jerkiness um, Especially when you play on cloths like this, if you if you introduce any of that into your stroke, into into your game, then you're likely to miss the shot. Um, but he's a great player, like I said, current Indian Blues champion, and I believe we'll see him in the SBI Academy soon at the World Match Play. Trevor's planning to enter that event. Yeah, like I say, he remains at the same tempo as Drifts at Walla. Even in pressure situations, he can maintain that beautiful cue action that he's got and temper around the table. So, a real top class player. As the bell goes, so congratulations to Dave Pauls here there, winning the 2024 Austrian Open here in Vienna. Defeating Drifts at Walla from India by 7 1 9 2 4 6. So as you heard there, nine minutes time the presentations will start. So please hang around for that. But in the meantime, we will close off the commentary from myself, Chris Coombe, Darren Clark alongside me for the last quarter of an hour. 
Angus McAnally, Patrick Stegmaier, Christian Kirk, and everyone else here in Vienna. We'll see you soon. Hi everyone, we're just going to pick this one up. We uh, were lucky to have the two streams running and uh, the play final is looking to be quite a close one, so it might be interesting final seven minutes or so. Uh, Martin Schmidt here, six points behind, playing Fraser Durham of Canada. Like I say, we've had two streams running all weekend. This is table three, the second stream table. And this is the play final, the, the Challenge Cup, as it is now called. It looks like it might be a bit of a blockbuster finish, Chris. Yeah, we thought we'd jump back in for the last few moments of this final of the Challenge Cup. Yeah, this is pretty close, isn't it, really? Similar to what we said with Druv, it's great to see Fraser here um, from Winnipeg in Canada. Uh, there's a bit of a scene happening over there. Obviously, we've had events there in the past, but he's made the effort to come across, and it's fantastic to see him. This. Uh, Kind of just needs to be negotiated. It's easy just to slip past the white, but he's played that nicely, pushed away over the pocket. So if you're in Martin's position here, Darren, I suppose you just want to make sure you don't do anything too complicated and just stay at the table, really. Well, that's the uh, that's the idea, Chris. Easier said than done at times, but let's see what happens. Tell me about it. That played that well, got a nice drop cannon here, so let's see if we can get a good connection on the red. That looks, that looks pretty good, although these pots are certainly, you've got to be careful with these. Yeah, shooting into a, a slightly blind pocket, I guess, not so much, but it's, it's tricky. Although he's knocked it in with a plomb. Played that very well. Yeah, perhaps he would have just liked a slightly thicker contact on the last drop cannon, but either way. He's still at the table. Possibly played both the pot and the cannon there just to, just to make sure. You see Patrick Stegmaier there. Wearing the, the white gloves as the referee, he's uh, been a fantastic help for us in organising these events here in Vienna. And the guys over here do a fantastic job. Bit of an awkward leave for, for Fraser. He might have to play this with a bit of power off the side cushion, I think. That's hard luck. He's still in with a chance, though. Four, four minutes remaining. It's a nice shot by Martin. Yeah, 
Yeah, played that very well, very confident. Little shake of the head there from Martin. He just looking to see if this red has just come away from the top cushion a little bit too far to going off it. So having to play the pot white, you would see. Maybe one more chance for Fraser. Yeah, time is uh, certainly ticking away now. Just three minutes to go. Yeah, it's good safety that. I'm pretty sure the red has just stopped in bulk. So, this has to go well, really, for Fraser to have a chance. This cannon. This looks close. That's a great shot. Unfortunately, he knew that was his last chance, really, you would feel. Maybe one last chance, Chris. Two minutes to go. 27 points difference. It's always difficult in this situation. You know that you've got to score and you've got to score fast, and and all these thoughts are going through your mind. And obviously the score line, so never easy. Ingus McAnally prowling in the background as he's about to bring the Challenge Cup to a close. Martin Schmidt, the champion. Yeah, Martin is based in this venue as well. I believe he is the treasurer of the club. So, very much uh, playing on home soil. Is the time goes and Martin Schmidt wins the Australian Open Challenge Cup. The presentations will follow shortly.
It's beautiful poetry in motion to watch the gorgeous skin off play, the beautiful touches of the cannons, and his position playing was a delight. We are thrilled to have him back playing on Europe, and as I said earlier on, we welcome all of the Indian players to WBL events. We want to see you here. Our, our, com our competitions are enriched by having people of the quality of our runner-up today in the 2024 Austrian Open, the fantastic, from India, Group Sitmala. <laughs>
First time being in Vienna for a long time, I have to say the conditions are absolutely fabulous. They might be tough, but they're really, really good to play. Uh, I came here and I wasn't sure what it would be like because it's a long time since I've been here. Obviously, in the academy, it's just so tough, but it's so hard. It makes you sharp. It, it, it's really good. And I think awareness to go out with referees, because referees referee all weekend, and anyone that I referee for an hour, and I'm like thinking, how should I do this? <laughs> Anyone that's got anything to do with getting me here, help me. Uh, WBL, all the sponsors that are here, everyone that's put all the time in. You just want to be really proud of yourself because you put on a real good show. And all I'd say to people is have a safe trip and thanks to everyone for having me. Well done, David Parson. <laughs> SBI Academy from the 12th to the 19th of April. We hope to see as many of you there as possible. And then the next port of call after that, and great to see such a huge representation from the island of Jersey because we're heading to Jersey on the 23rd, 4th, 5th, 6th of May for a fantastic uh, uh, tournament there, especially level four, I think level five, I think it's, it's really special. They're, they're pulling out all the stops to have a wonderful four days. Thank you to everybody who's come from all over the world. It warms our hearts to see the beautiful game played beautifully in a spirit of friendship and collegiality that means the world to us. And yes, we would like to present, uh, 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 CW, ladies and gentlemen, a very modest man, Mr. CW has a little presentation for me. It's a polo shirt from the club here. Thank you so much. Well done. So please come and see us in, in Jersey, come and see us in Ireland, and come and see us all around the world. From all of us here in Vienna, if you're watching online, thank you so much. Good night, God bless, safe all. Thank you.